to see you. Appreciate you being on as always. Um, you know, a quick turnaround game. And uh, I want to thank Greg Herenda, you know, and FDU for going through all the protocol that we uh, make our visiting teams go through. And I really appreciate how they cooperated. And uh, I love, I always, I love him as a coach. I think he's one of the best coaches around. And has done a great job with that program. They have the player of the year in the league. And I knew coming in, this would be real tough. Jenkins can play. And uh, uh, I thought Jacob Young did a really good job. Montez Garden uh, is a real crafty guard. I think he's got 1,300 points already. So I thought, you know, obviously a lot of things that we need to work on. Uh, but some good things, second half especially, where we rebounded the ball well and got the ball up the floor um, and played better defense in, in stretches. So got to get better, um, keep figuring out our lineup too with substitutions and what have you. It's um, what we kind of have to do without having any scrimmage games or any of that to kind of work through. Um, you know, but happy with the guys. Good win. Quick turnaround now for a really good Hofstra team. Thanks, Coach. We'll take the first question from Jerry Carino. Steve, through, through two games, what do you think of the way your backcourt has responded to Gio being out? Well, I mean, that's a tough, you know, you, you don't want to plan that. Um, I think they've gotten some really, you know, good minutes. I think uh, Jacob, we ask him to do a lot. He plays with great energy. Paul gives us a ton. You know, Montez, and now we've gotten a few minutes, too, from Mawat, who plays hard and is figuring it out. So, um, you know, um, I th think whenever you have a, an obstacle like Gio being out, you don't want to go through it, but it gives other guys opportunities to step up and play more minutes and hopefully, you know, take advantage of it. So I think our guards doing a good job. It's going to be a harder test, obviously, the next game. Um, um, the guards for Hofstra are real good. They're picked to win that league and they won it last year. So um, they're going to keep getting harder and harder tests here and, and they got to keep staying the course and keep getting better. We'll take the next question from Bobby Darren. Coach, can you just talk about the games uh, that Jacob and Ron had tonight, both career highs in, in a Rutgers uniform? I mean, really, you know, they gave us great energy. You know, Ron has become, you know, a tough, tough matchup. And Jacob, too, when he's playing defense and playing with that great energy, he's really a tough guy to guard. He's as fast as there is. Uh, but I really like, you know, what he's doing, you know, on the defensive end. So I'm, I'm real pleased he's, you know, put a lot of time in. You obviously see his improvements, um, you know, and, and he's guarding guys too. And he's guarding them 94 feet. Ron, obviously, you know, we need that from Ron every night. Uh, I wish we could get that every night. But tonight, um, you know, he was special. He made threes. He could post up. He could do a lot of things. He's a tough guy to guard. Um, and so uh, we need that, especially without uh, Gio being in uniform. We'll take the next question from Richie Schneider, right? Coach, everyone wants to talk about Harper and Young's game, but uh, what can you say about uh, Montez Mathis' game? And I think he had, it was 15-4-3 and even three steals also. I will tell you too, and I loved it in the second half. I challenged him at halftime to really, I thought he played tremendous defense in the second half, really made it hard, um, you know, on Jenkins. And Rush is a good guard too, and he can really score. Uh, but I thought Montez did a really good job uh, of kind of settling down on that end of the floor and giving us some really good minutes. But, you know, he's a good defender. He's a veteran guy. I trust Montez. He had a really good offseason, too. He's in great shape, too, um, conditioning-wise during this uh, pandemic. Did a good job with his body. And, uh, you know, uh, we need him to continue to keep growing, too. He's a better shooter this year. He's a better ball handler. Um, so excited about him and uh, need him to be really good. We'll take one from Aaron Brightman and then go back to Jerry. Hey, Coach. Wanted to ask about Moab's uh, game. Uh, and also just a challenge for you, like you just talked about, no scrimmages. Just, you know, knowing what you have with the freshmen and being able to, to get them spots like you did tonight. Yeah, well, I tell you what, it's just been, you know, a, a bizarre, you know, preseason. You know, n nothing... No rhythm to it, no referees. You know, we fouled way too much. I've been saying that in practice. Tonight, we fouled way too much. Uh, but Mawat keeps growing. He's like one of those guys. He just keeps plugging away. He's early in the gym. Um, you know, he's going to be a really good defender for us, too. I think you saw the 
the improvement from first game to the second game too. I think he's a little nervous in the first game. Um, and he'll get more and more confident here. Uh, with playing time, he can really shoot the ball too. So I'm real pleased. And, and, and on the defensive end of the floor, he can guard multiple positions and he kind of takes that as a challenge. So, um, you know, real pleased with all our freshmen. I think Dean Reaper too, you know, with some good minutes and, and, and the other night and, and again tonight. And, you know, Oscar too will get his chance. Go ahead, Jerry. Steve, the, uh, what can you tell us about Gio now? How how has his ankle responded to treatment? Where is he at compared to where he was two nights ago? Yeah, I mean, he's in a boot now. So he was in the crutches the other day. So now it's a boot. Um, not a whole lot to report. He's not, not going to play anytime soon. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep him in Rich's room there, the training room, get as much treatment as he can. But, um, you know, the boot will be on for a little bit here. Okay, thanks. Thank you. We can go to Jaden Daly with the next question. Jaden, if you can unmute and go ahead. Steve, how, how satisfied were you with the ball control in the second half? Ten turnovers in the first, and then only three after that. What did you take away from handling the ball and responding a lot better to sharing and overcoming after you? Yeah, we were a little sloppy today, obviously. He did a much better job the other day of sharing the game. You know, the ball never stuck the other night. Um, it got moved around pretty good. Um, today, you know, the first half, we really kind of uh, didn't do a great job in that area. Obviously, 10 turnovers, way too many. This is, a, you know, seven, eight turnover game. Um, you know, so we got to do a better job, you know, of, of handling the ball, making great decisions. And, uh, you know, again, you know, we'll continue to improve, but I love the second half. I thought our defense was better. I thought we rebounded better, and I thought we took care of the ball better. So um, improvement in the second half, and, um, you know, that's a good sign, and we needed it to happen to beat a good Hofstra team coming up. We'll take a question from Matt at Sugan. Yeah, Steve, uh, last year you guys were without Geo for I think it was like six or seven games. How does that prepare you for however long the stretch here is going to be? Well, I mean, you know, that was kind of in the middle of the season after we had kind of been through some things. Um, you know, Caleb McConnell's a big loss too and Geo, so to lose two veteran players like that that play multiple, multiple positions, um, you know, it's just challenging, but... You know, it's all about obstacles and it's all about how you navigate them as a program, as a team. Uh, no one's always healthy. No one's ever healthy. they are always got something going on. Um, you know, I love my bench. I play a lot of guys. People always ask me why you play so many guys. Well, this is why I play so many guys. So when they have an opportunity, they have, they're have they not checking in the game for the first time. So, um, you know, don't like to go through any stretches with, with those two, you know, guys out. But we're going to have to live with it right now and, and – um, other guys are going to have to, you know, take up because Gio could defend. He could get assist. He could score. I mean, he did a lot of things for us. So everyone's got to chip in a little bit. And, uh, you know, same thing with Caleb McConnell, too. He's a high-energy guy. We can go to Liberty with a question. Coach, I'm not sure if you saw the news, but Sacred Heart announced a little bit after 7 that they're shutting down their program for two weeks due to a positive COVID test. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, being that you guys uh, literally just played them. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we have the best, you know, doctors and medical protocol in the, in the country. So I know they tested a bunch of times before we played them and everybody was negative, but I honestly, you know, don't, don't know anything about that. Um, everybody was great when they came here and they had tested for consecutive days. So, um, Thanks, guys. We'll end it there and let Coach go. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much for being on. Thank uh -huh. you.